Well, hello, Crime Stoppers. Yeah, I'm on a little bit. I know I'm on a little bit of a streak. So finally, got uh, got some props here. Uh, does not turn your skin blue. Kills everything. <laughs> they cannot see the creatures. Uh, where are Johnny come lately is on this planet, even though we've been here like I don't know, for 270 million years. But I mean, the thing's been here for billions of years. Um, and the guys that were here before us, uh, hydrogen, right? Uh, so this, uh, uh, removes their ability to breathe so they cannot, uh, mutate. So you take antibiotics and other things like that. Also 2.5 water because 2.5 water, um, has all kinds of, uh, molecules in there, chlorine and, and, uh, and, uh, O2s and hydrogen peroxide and you know uh, so H2O2s and all because oxygen likes hydrogen and so it will literally suck the hydrogen out of some of these pathogens and then they die and they can't uh, mutate uh, same thing silver silver makes it so that they cannot mutate so you get like 99 to 99 99% kill rate um, and none of the ones that survive mutate whereas if you're taking antibiotics uh, you get 96 98 even if you get 98 percent those two percent well then they survive and now they've mutated against that and now we've got super bugs that uh, you know uh, orthomycin and uh, they've mutated against that um, penicillin they've obviously mutated against that right so now we've got super gonorrhea uh, <laughs> I mean, fucking humans just ridiculous um, I'm going to put a bunch of links down below, like I always do. But like I said, this time I got props. Oh, look. Right? This stuff right here. Okay, this is good stuff right here. This is just, and, and you can pause it and, and uh, read. But that's just basically your plain old, regular old uh, resveratol. Um, this one, Mobeta, as we say in Hawaii. Uh, because, there you go, there you go. Uh, because it's got uh, more stuff in there. Right? Not just the resveratol, but also uh, phenols and so on. So anyway, um, I'm not selling this stuff. I don't have an Amazon store. I just uh, did my research um, after watching the Joe Rogan experience. Uh, do you want to live forever? No, you don't want to live forever. This husk <laughs> gets stale and boring after a while. But uh, if you're going to be in it, might as well be healthy and happy and uh, not be all decrepit and not be able to get out of bed and chase your kids around uh, or have a fun time. Because they've got you believing. Like, I was just watching uh, the latest piece of propaganda and notice that we had on uh, the big screen, which was Captain Marvel. Um, it, it's a privilege to be on this planet. Make no mistake. It's, if you want it to be a shithole, it can absolutely be a shithole. But um, I live on Maui. Uh, I can tell you that there are rainbows and there are days when you drive around on this island and uh, if tears don't come to your eyes because it's so beautiful, then something's wrong with you. And I've lived here pretty much my whole life. Um, but, you know, same thing. I've been to the Grand Canyon. I've been uh, I've been all across the United States. I've been to 49 states. The only place I haven't been to is Alaska because I hate the cold and I keep not getting there in the summertime. Um, but anyway, the idea being, but I've been to Canada and I've been as far north as Edmonton in Canada and so forth. Beautiful country, beautiful, just gorgeous um, mountains and so forth. And Guatemala, right? I mean, okay, I, I, the... Uh, Yeah, Guatemala was a bit of a shithole, but I mean, the, at the same time, I mean, those volcanoes and lakes and so forth were just, I mean, b gloriously beautiful. The people there are also very kind, but the uh, the situation that they find themselves in, not so, not so great. Um, because, yeah, abject, bar I mean, so open sewers, and I mean, I just saw things in Guatemala that uh, humans shouldn't see. Um, anyway... The point being is that uh, find out more about these things. And then this one, just the simplest thing. I talked about it numerous times. Just plain old, regular old iodine. Just regular old Lugol is 5%. Cheapest, if you can find, I mean, you can't even get this. I tried to get this on uh, uh, Amazon, I think it was where I got it. Or maybe it was eBay, I don't remember. But anyway, they're out of stock in there. You don't know when it's going to be back in again. Because it's just plain old iodine. Just plain old iodine. Every household should have this. Um... And then, of course, CBD. I've got numerous kinds of CBD. That's one of them. This is one of the more expensive ones. And I didn't notice any difference between this more expensive one and one of the cheaper ones that I had. So um, CBD is CBD, as far as I can tell. Um, although that's probably not true, because like you think honey is just honey. Mm, honey is not just honey. Um, you got to get uh, pure, unfiltered honey. Okay. Um,
that's the uh, health and nutrition portion of the uh, program. Uh, <laughs> and okay, and on that last video, it makes it sound like uh, there's one part where, okay, they're raping children. Okay, that, this is the whole point. All, all these different guys, oh, that's the part I didn't do. I should have prepared that part. But SGT Report and Greg Hunter and, and uh, the X-22 and Tracy Beans and go on down the list of all these different people, um, even Catherine Austin Fitz and, 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 and. Um, they seem not to be able to talk about the reason why uh, they were raping, or excuse me, well, I know why, they, well, you know why they were raping children because they're sick fucks, but I mean, um, why it is that they were so desperate to unseat Trump, why it is that they came up with this cockamamie plan to try and uh, get him out of office or, uh, you know, Russian collusion and so on. It, uh, it, it, yeah, to cover many of their other crimes, but the primary crime, the primary thing that people just can't seem to wrap their minds around is these people were trafficking children. They were slave traffickers. They have been slave, they were generational slave traffickers, traffickers many of them, um, and they've been trafficking children for fucking ever. Uh, and, and not just children, adults, uh, go to Libya right now, uh, or, or don't, <laughs> actually. Um, they had a pretty thing go a pretty good thing going under Gaddafi. I mean, the, the guy, was he a dictator? Yes. Was he a good guy? I'm not going to call him a good guy. Uh, and fuck any of you guys that say I look like him. Um, but the idea is that, uh, you know, you wanted education, you could education. He was housing people. He was greening the desert. He was coming up with a gold dinar. He was doing all manner of things to further and better his people there. And did he do it with an iron fist? Absolutely. But um, are the people better off now than they were under Gaddafi? Mm, any, by any measure, um, they were far, far better off under Gaddafi. Um, we've turned that place into a shithole. Um, and now the slave trade is thriving there. You can buy a black man for $400, apparently. Um, just fucking sick and wrong. And that was 100% uh, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. Uh, for that alone, they should hang. Um, but uh, that's just the very tip of the iceberg when it comes to these sick, sick, demented, filthy, disgusting humans that uh, worship the elder gods. Um, and we'll talk about the uh, Captain Marvel thing where it's, oh, these... Poor, misunderstood, shape-shifting lizard people that just need a home. They've been chased around the galaxy because wherever they fucking go, they destroy the planet and subjugate to the best of their ability. Drinking the blood of our children, right? Farming our children. Okay, there's 7 billion of us or more, maybe 8 billion. We're getting there. It's hard to tell how many of us there are on the planet. But let's go with the latest number I'm looking at. It was like 7.5. Um, I remember when there was only 3.5 on this planet. But, um, so, yeah, we have grown, but they, and they only take a small percentage. Think about it, if, um, and I'll put the link, 65,000, uh, black missing women, uh, and children, uh, black girls missing, uh, that's a teeny tiny percentage, even of the United States, there's 325 million of us in the United States, so it's just a tiny, tiny percentage, right? You, nobody's gonna miss them, right? Um, 500,000 or so, that's just a, you know, ballpark estimate, uh, just looking at, uh, Child Protective Services and how many people go missing in national parks and, and, uh, under the care of CPS and God knows what happens in our prison systems and so forth, they don't even keep good track of that. Um, so even then, that's, uh, you know, one out of, uh, 300, right? Uh, in the United States, on the planet itself, uh, there are 7.5 billion on the planet, so if they take one or two million a year, right? Um, but no, damn it, these people need to hang. And the people that are in their service and the people that uh, look the other way, uh, all of them, all of them, there, there needs to be a cleanup. Uh, and uh, we need to quit looking the other way. And the Jesse, Jesse Smollett, who gives a fuck? Um, and I guarantee you that was a... Uh, uh, what's the word for that? Yes, uh, I mean, it, it's theater. It's just fucking theater. Uh, pay attention to that. Don't pay attention to the fact that they were raping children. Um, the idea that, yeah, we've got problems with race relations in the United States, make no mistake, uh, there are some problems here. But, I mean, for that guy to fake a hate crime, and it's so clear, they got two guys that basically said, yeah, he paid us. Right? So, I mean, slam dunk, 16 freaking uh, felonies, and uh, they let him go. Right? Uh, because some people made some phone calls. Now, if they would let a little fish like that guy off, right, some TV actor guy, um, do you think that Hillary Clinton could get off? Do you think that a Barack Obama, who used to be president of the United States, would be able to get off? 
Um, do you think, right? So, I mean, they have, that's why it's taking quite a while. Uh, so be patient. I am impatient as fuck. Make no mistake. I am absolutely impatient. Um, but understand that it takes uh, a while to line all the ducks in a row so that you cannot get off, right? Because once uh, the prosecutions are and the uh, indictments are unsealed, um, and see, that's why they had to have the Supreme Court because you think they're not going to take it all the way to the Supreme Court? Well, let's see. Right now it's 5 4, motherfuckers, and uh, it will be 6 3 shortly. Um, because I believe we've got weekend at Bernie's going on when it comes to <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I mean, <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, um, I think she's dead. She might be dead. And if she's not dead, she's damn close. And she certainly isn't any, in any kind of shape, uh, uh, <laughs> any kind of, uh, shape to be doling out justice to the rest of us. Um, and, and if you look at her, oh my God, you look at her, uh, past rulings and uh, take a look at her history, uh, how that woman got to the Supreme Court uh, for a lifetime is, um, you know, until she dies and, or and quits, um, is beyond me. Uh, I mean, look at Obamacare, really? Um, never in the history of history uh, that I can find have they ever been able to tax you for not doing something. Never was this, no pope, no emperor, no anybody was able to uh, put through some kind of uh, ordination, <laughs> some kind of mandate, some kind of law that said that um, if you don't buy Obamacare, uh, you're going to get taxed, right? So if you don't do anything, you get taxed, right? The taxes have only been for buying something. Like if you buy something, you pay a tax, right? We're going to steal from you, right? I just uh, paid off a, uh, or just had a, uh, what do you call me, uh, rather large purchase and, um, or even just a small purchase. I, I, th I bought something for 50 bucks and of course the state of Hawaii took two bucks, right? So instead of it being 50 bucks, it was two bucks because our, our, uh, excise tax here is 4%. And in Hawaii, we have the lovely tax on a tax, right? We, uh, no, pretty, I don't think any other state does, um, say you, uh, buy, uh, does a tax on a tax, buy a, uh, something for wholesale. Okay, so there's a 4% tax on that. Okay, it's already been taxed. Okay, so then the wholesaler sells it to another guy. There's a 4% tax on that, so there's a tax on that tax. And then that guy gets it to retail, and then you pay a 4% tax on that. Ah, it's just theft. It's just theft. And then I'm going to make a whole video that's not going to be so... Not that my videos have wide appeal anyway, but I mean, um, $261 to, to register my piece of shit car, and our roads are shit here. Um, just ridiculous how bad our roads are in Hawaii. And they're talking about paying, uh, you know, having toll roads and, you know, pay. we have hotel room tax. We have tax after tax after tax in this state. And the graft and grifting here is beyond uh, the most uh, common folks' ability to conceive of or believe even. Um, and our roads are shit, right? I mean, just shit. Uh, to the point where I think we should get some kind of class action lawsuit together for, uh, for uh, trucking companies and anybody that drives um, commercially. For it to have them pay for your suspension because uh, there's all kind of work that, that I, your car will need because of going through these potholes and driving over these these rough roads when um, they could just do it right in the first place and they wouldn't have to uh, you wouldn't have to have all these potholes and so forth anyhow and then you got the county workers who just do as little as possible for as much money as possible and ukupau is uh, something we have here um, that it is not common elsewhere or that means, um, you know, if you get whatever the job done is, you get paid and you go home, right? So let's say, you, whatever it is, let's say the, uh, and the, the, just an example, pulling an example out of my ass, it's probably not correct, but I mean, um, it, well, not probably, will not be correct. Let's say you can pick up 12 uh, uh, dumpsters full of garbage in a day, right? That's your, that's your job. Okay, so if you get it done in an hour, then you get it done in an hour. If it takes you 12 hours, then it takes 12 hours. If it takes eight hours, then it takes eight hours. Well, guess what? Picking up 12 dumpsters in, can probably be done in an hour or two, and uh, then you're done, and you get paid for the day, right? It's not that, okay, so you got 12 done, go get 12 more, and go get 12 more. No, it's not efficiency. It's the least efficient way of doing whatever it is. That's government, right? <laughs> that's, that's your government. Uh... Anyhow, um, this is just me ranting on various topics. Uh, this right here, these are planetary alignments. And uh, I'll see if, I hope I can find that guy's video because I was trying to do the math on this and uh, he did it for me. So, uh, okay. 
So that's going to be a massive one uh, in 2037. And it's not the end of the damn world. Uh, the past, in the past, they have warned us about these events. And uh, they were able to warn us, so obviously they survived. Um, that one's going to be no fun whatsoever. Uh, and see, you can get um, certain astrological uh, software. So you can line the planets up here, and that's a major planetary alignment right there. And then you can run it backwards. When was the last time this happened? And then go look through history. Ooh, bad things happened, right? <laughs> they were they were chronicled all across the uh, world. Uh, and uh, pretty much every culture had some issue with uh, when those planets align the way they're going to align on the 6th of March, 2046. Um, I believe this may be the Sephardic of Fire that uh, our buddy... Uh, uh, I'll call him by his name. I, I usually call him Seen Edgar, but uh, it wasn't Seen Edgar. It, uh, he, in this body, we call him uh, David Wilcock. Um, and then this one, which we have nothing to worry about because none of us will be here, no matter how much <laughs> of this stuff you take, um, you, uh, you won't be around in 20, 30, 2331. But apparently the dragon comes to visit. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. On uh, 13 February 2331. Um, because there's yet another alignment. And uh, it looks like uh, that's when like, you know, rocks and fire and brimstone and all this stuff fall from the sky. And it's going to be uh, unpleasant to be on planet Earth for a little while there. But if we were preparing and we started preparing now, um, no big deal. I believe this is why you see so many huge cities underground and why, like, Gobe uh, Gobeki Tepe was uh, buried under sand so that it wouldn't be destroyed by some of these things that happened. Because uh, there are plenty of stories, if you look in the past, of rocks falling from the sky, fire falling from the sky. Um, and then, of course, there's water, right? And, the, and the, if you talk about the great cataclysms that have happened... Uh, Graham Hamka, I'll put a video from him down there. Uh, talk about uh, the various huge uh, underground cities and uh, things that have been here in the past that we've discovered. And uh, some of the writings talk about the fact that the reason why these guys went underground is because it was raining rocks. Um, I'd go underground too. And you had to bring your cattle and all this stuff. And it doesn't last forever, but it lasts for a while. And that's just like the day of this, I believe, and see, I don't have, I don't have it uh, fully correct in my mind, or, or I don't understand it uh, completely, but that these are just the beginning dates, right? That's the day that the alignment happens. It's, um, does stuff happen a little before this and, uh, you know, a while after this? I don't think it's just that one day event. Um, I don't know is the short answer. Um, but the fact that these, this is the time to be preparing for, and, um, I'll be 72, uh, when this one happens, and, uh, so the chances of me actually being here are unfortunately pretty high, <laughs> which is how I tie all this together, which is why I said, like, you don't want to live forever, but if you're going to be here, might as well take the stuff that we know slows down the aging process. Can you stop the aging process? As far as I can tell, you can't stop it, but you can sure as hell slow it down. Uh, that's pretty clear. Um, most people are amazed that I'm as old as I am and that I'm not gray. Uh, and I see a lot of my friends, they're gray and super wrinkled and their hair is falling out and their bodies just don't do what they want them to do anymore and they're having strokes and freaking bypass surgery or they're dead. Um, why? Because they don't take care. That's why. <laughs> right? You gotta take care of the body you're in, this husk that you're in. And then you gotta understand, you're not even the body, right? What What's coming up? The Feast of Ishtar is coming up. What does that celebrate? That celebrates eternal life, right? They've, they've muddled the story for you, but the idea is, uh, the thing goes on forever. And it's uh, hard for us, as Fermi said, um, and Feynman and a few others, uh, it's hard for us to comprehend the concept that perhaps we don't know everything and not knowing is okay, but the idea is that uh, there might not have been a beginning that we can tell, and there certainly isn't an end, and if there's an end, what happens after that? So where's an end, right? We live in the impossible place. But the feast that's, the feast that's coming up is uh, the celebration of eternal life. I mean, they've got it, chocolate bunnies and Easter eggs and so on, <laughs> and uh, bunnies and eggs. What is that? That's the symbol of renewal. 
Now, uh, you good folk uh, that can't comprehend are these people that make adrenochrome and torture children and, and so on and, and run slaves and do what these people have been doing for, oh, I don't know, uh, at least a few thousand years. Um, uh, see, this is, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go down some fun rabbit holes in just a minute here. Well, actually, I'm not going to go that far down. You go down. I'll, I'll just, I'll go, it's like, there's the rabbit hole. You go down the rabbit hole. Like um, this one lady, and I'll put the uh, video down there. Um, where she talks about organite and she talks about uh, chemtrails and using organite and so forth. Um, go find out about Royal Rife and uh, some of the things that that, that guy had. Um, and uh, his technology and the book burn. As soon as they start burning books, ooh, now I'm interested. <laughs> as soon as they start throwing guys in jail for just doing science, um, now I'm very, very interested. But anyway, um, she... Um, with some temerity, mentions the fact that she has uh, stumbled across the fact that there might be others, <laughs> just like me, and we'll leave it at that. But the fact that there are four trillion galaxies out there, each with hundreds of billions of suns, each with, and I mean, without getting too crazy about it, crop circles, um, there's something going on there. Right? You take a look at that where it's not where uh, everybody wants you to think that it's just a couple of drunk guys making the, you know, f having some fun in the middle of the night. But um, there seems to be a whole lot more to that than, and especially some of those designs are, um, if you know what you're looking at, uh, quote unquote, they're trying to tell you something. Um, but the idea being is there's a whole lot more going on here than you might expect. And uh, the fact that there seems to be uh, like in the movies, right? Like I said, these uh, these others that are just misunderstood, shape shifting, blood drinking, uh, child raping, uh, right? They have higher intelligence than us, and uh, they hide. They hide among us, uh, apparently. Like I said, have I ever seen uh, quote unquote an alien um, new? I have not to my ability that, that I would not that I would remember and not that I could say, yep, yeah, that guy over there, right? No, absolutely not. Um, do I believe that they could exist? Notice the word could. And the answer is yes, I do believe that they could exist um, because my study of mathematics has taken me down some, and physics has taken me down some interesting roads. And the fact that there is uh, more than a single dimension has to be more than a single dimension for this all to work. Um, means that, well, if we're in this dimension, are there other creatures? And see, don't get um, confused between the words density and dimension. That's another thing that they've done. They, they gave us this language, right? Um, again, uh, if you read your history, you read your Bible, you read any of the quote-unquote scripture and holy books, it's always Moses went up to the mountain to go get law from the burning bush or from the, this other thing. Um, you want to call it God, you, um, some people believe it was an alien, whatever, right? But didn't come from us, came from others, right? The law came from others. The language came from others. The, a lot of the occulted knowledge always comes from others, right? Whether we call them angels or demons or genies or whatever. Um, I mean, in Hawaiian culture, right? Uh, the, the gift of fire, uh, we didn't come up with fire. That was given to us, right? We didn't come up with all, I mean, it was given to us. Uh, but they uh, trick us like Saruman and they tell us all these things like, oh, we're the greatest thing that's ever been and you're the smartest thing that's ever been and you're the pinnacle of whatever's been here on the planet. We're, we're it. Maybe not. And uh, just saying, perhaps not. And 6,000 years, that right there, that's painful. Because when you start looking at, uh, again, the math is, is pretty sound that we've been here a whole lot longer than 6,000 years. But if they can get you to believe that, then uh, they can get you to believe a lot of things. And then if they can control your understanding of the past, they can certainly can control your understanding of what happens in the future. And um, the idea is that if we were knowledgeable, not ignorant, and we're preparing for what comes, like I could have told you there was going to be floods. In fact, I did. I, I, if I didn't, I should have. Uh, told you that uh, with all that heavy snow and all that hard winter that we just had, what happens afterwards? Every time. This is not the first time we've had massive flooding in the Midwest. Um, when you get heavy snow, uh, the snow eventually melts because it doesn't stay winter forever. And then eventually it's going to be a hot summer. 
Uh, we have spring thaw going on right now, and uh, it's flooding. Uh, so expect commodity prices to go up. Uh, govern yourselves accordingly if you play in the markets, because um, commodities are going to go up. Food prices are going to go up. They have to because there's going to be less of it. Many crops are being destroyed. Uh, many farms are being destroyed. Um, agriculture in this country is uh, having some stress right now, uh, which means we're going to have to have some imports. And that's, an, and that's another thing. Uh, right? It would trump successful or a failure. Um, Seventy percent of U.S. dollars are outside the country. Uh, Trump is bringing many of those dollars home and trying to. And I got no issue with the the uh, you know trying to put people back to work and uh, building back up the economy. But understand when more people go back to work and uh, more of these companies make major investments in the United States, billions of dollars at a time, that brings more dollars back into the country. That makes every dollar that's already here worth a little less, period. Therefore, gold, therefore, silver. Um, and that whole market, as I've said before, is completely upside. Our markets are completely insane right now. Platinum is worth less than, than gold at the moment. Uh, silver is worth half of what it was like in 2014. Um, they, the most manufacturers and miners can't pull it out of the ground for what the, uh, what the price is right now. Um, palladium has gone from, I remember when you get a palladium coin for 200 bucks. Uh, now it's, uh, last I checked, it was over 1600. Um, eventually it's going to happen to the other metals because, uh, especially, uh, silver in my opinion, um, as the and I know people because the silver to gold ratio is like went eighty to one or something ridiculous like that. It should be around sixteen. And there's this uh, very simple principle in mathematics and economics, which is known as revision to mean. Um, eventually, it's going to go back there. So this one commentator a pundit I was uh, listening to, and I don't remember I listened to so many of them. Uh, he basically said when it went over eighty, he sold all his gold and bought silver. Because one ounce of uh, gold, he could get 80 ounces of silver. Uh, it's never been like that. You, it should be somewhere, you know, 15, 16, 17, you know, 20, but 80, um, he couldn't resist. Uh, so when I, oh, I don't have any of that either, but um, I have a few, a little bit of silver around here. Don't keep your silver in your house. And don't tell people you have, there's one guy, he's like bragging on YouTube or I don't know where he was about how much silver he had. And sure enough, people came to his house at gunpoint and took his silver from him. So one, don't tell him you have it. And two, if you have it, don't keep it at your house. That doesn't mean put it in a safety deposit box. That's a dumb place to put it because the banks own it if you put it there. Um, but the idea is uh, make sure that uh, you, know, you have it in a secure location or a safe location that isn't where you are. But you can get to it if you need to get to it. Um, and how to do that? There are plenty of books and so how to plorine and how to do, uh, you know, safe storage and cold storage and so forth. Um, and, you know, there's warehouses that have uh, plenty more security than you do. But the problem is uh, you got to trust the warehouse, right? Because they're going to give you a piece of paper and you may come back with that piece of paper and they may just go like, eh, and what are you going to do about it? Because they got the guns, right? So, uh, you know, there is some conundrums there, but the idea is that you need to be able to put your silver someplace safe that isn't where uh, others can get it. And, um, you know, people will hide it in uh, safes and so forth, but I've heard of stories where they just take the whole safe, and then once they have the safe, I mean, huge thing, right? I mean, anyway, they get the safe. And then they have all the time in the world to crack it or, uh, you know, take a blowtorch to it or whatever, because eventually, uh, you know, you can, given time, uh, there is nothing secure. Um, to, you know, because we humans, we're fairly clever at that kind of stuff. But, uh, and we have many devices, you know, uh, diamond saws and so forth. So there are, there's no safe that can be, that cannot be cracked. Um, and there's plenty of great uh, stories about banks and uh, other institutions that thought they had secure safes and uh, found out they weren't so secure. <laughs> right? Some great heist stories. Um, but the point being is uh, you wouldn't have to worry about it if you just didn't tell people that you had it. right? And certainly don't tell them where it is. Um, and, the, and the idea is like, you, you know, you don't, you don't need to... Uh, why do people need to know uh, what kind of guns you own, how much gold you have, how much silver you have, how much, I mean, how many pieces of paper you have, 
right? Because this is the other thing. Cash is going to become king, I believe this, uh, for a little while before everything goes to shit. I think um, if you take a look at the pyramid of, uh, I think Run to Gold had a good pyramid, the inverted pyramid. Uh, it all ends up in gold and silver, though, precious metals. But uh, before it gets there, and uh, if you study history and study many of the, um, uh, right, it's first by deflation, then by inflation. Um, so when you get the deflation, the uh, dollar actually will become worth much, and you can use it to buy stuff. Um, but then eventually it goes to shit, and uh, all paper, all paper eventually returns to paper. I made lots of videos about that. The Federal Reserve um, just prints money out of thin air. Oh, and speaking of that, actually I'll make another video about that. But this whole thing with the promissory notes and so forth, and I'll put a couple uh, uh, videos below about that. Um, it works. <laughs> I can now speak with personal experience. I even got an apology. <laughs> uh, and I'm not going to get too terribly into it. Like I said, I'll make a whole other video about that. But, um, yeah, it works. you got to know what you're doing. Like I said, those pieces of paper, you have to know. See, um, pardon me for just a moment. <sighs> See this? This is legal paper. They call it legal paper for a reason. Okay. Um, otherwise, it's a letter. Uh, so if you're going to dick around with this kind of stuff. You need to have legal paper to make legal documents. Uh, if you're going to deal with courts, you want legal documents. Just saying, right? Learn, I mean, you have to learn what the words mean. You have to understand the word magic that they have given us. Um, this, that the paper makes a difference. And that's not a joke. Um, like the size of the paper makes a difference. The words on the paper make how you put the words there. That's called grammar and syntax. That all makes a difference. Um, and then understand, these are documents. And the whole motif comes from these Ferengi, these freaking, uh, the, the basic cults, right? There's five of them. Well, actually, there's a bunch of cults. There's four major ones. And uh, they still rule to this day. The uh, remnants of uh, the mushroom cult, the uh, <laughs> the uh, those that uh, were into the plants and so forth, we call those pharmaceutical companies now. Um, and go back and look at pharmacology. They're, those they're, those are not makers of medicine. Those are makers of poison. That's where that word originally comes from. And then the bankers, the ones that fooled around with paper. And then there's the fish cult. And then there's, I mean, it's a blend of of interesting things and uh, when you start doing the etymology and going back it back back in time um, it's the remnants of a great culture that once uh, dominated this planet that was decimated by a uh, comet apparently that uh, smashed into uh, Greenland we finally found the crater we finally found the, the impact where that happened, and it looks like it happened about 12,500 years ago, just like Grand Hopkirk said by doing his uh, archaeology, and, uh, and you know, he was derided and made fun of for decades, um, but the idea being is that, uh, no, there was a big impact a long time ago. There was a culture that uh, was at least, at least as high, uh, highly advanced as, let's say, uh, and I'll put the video down here, and I because I, I completely agree, and I'm just repeating, parroting what uh, Graham Hancock and a couple of these other people have said. But uh, and, I, and I I have some disagreements, and I have some problems with with uh, his some of his theories and so forth. Um, because and I'm actually more extreme and more radical than he is. He's actually m m more um, what's the word uh, reasonable than I am when it comes to the the past. Because no, I think that uh, we were much, much higher technology than we are now. We've risen and fallen many, many times in the past. I mean, we've been here for not just a few thousand years, millions of years uh, in this form. Um, and, uh, and like I said, we're coming up on the uh, Feast of Ishtar and we are celebrating that renewal, that, that fact that you, you, they can't kill us. They can't, you can't, they, they can't kill you. You're not this body. <laughs> when you're in this dimension, you've got to monkey around in this meat suit, but I mean, you're not, you, this isn't you. This, this is this is what you are in, uh, and see, that's not quite the right term, but we'll, we'll go with that, um, for however long you're here, 
and however many times you want to be here, and you can be here lots and lots of times. It's fun being here. I keep saying this. I get, I get so tired of people that are just like, oh, it's a shithole planet. It is not a shithole planet. This could be a beautiful paradise if you guys would just wake up a little bit um, and treat each other well and understand the three basic concepts. Like I said, we need to meditate. We need to... Uh, and see, that never happened, right? And, and here we are coming up on yet another feast where they have taken uh, the happy side of it uh, for us, but the other side of it for them. Uh, the renewal that they do has to do with blood sacrifice, right? Because blood is the renewal. Ugh, and how, and ugh, anyway. And see, don't even want to talk about it, right? Nobody wants to talk about the fact that they were raping children, right? This whole thing, the whole reason why Trump is where he's at is because a bunch of... Uh, people in the alliance, uh, if you want to call it that, um, because like I said, cabal, alliance, all these terms, fine, these are these are words that they gave us, but uh, birds, uh, I mean, same bird, same guys, but some of them had gotten sick of, uh, I mean, sick, because they are sick of the murder, they are sick of the child rape, they are sick of these old rituals, they are sick of the, the destruction of this beautiful place we call planet Earth, right? And then they began to realize uh, same thing with a lot of others, is that uh, they can't progress until we progress, right? Hundredth monkey concept here. Um, until the least of us move forward, the guys in front can't move forward. It's like dragging an anchor, right? So uh, the chain only goes so far. So when they realized that they got to the end of their rope and uh, they couldn't go any further until the guys in back move forward, um, they came back to help us, right, out of their, out of, and then they, they tried to make it, like, oh, the kindness of bullshit, they would have left us here to rot, but the, uh, the idea being, do I have a pen here? The idea being is that uh, this thing only goes so far, right, so they can't go over here until that part moves forward too, right, and then they can move up, but, uh, and if it wasn't for that, they could give a fuck about us. Make no mistake, this whole thing about them being magnanimous and, and uh, enlightened is complete bullshit in my mind. Um, like I said, I come from the Wrath of Waters, uh, and uh, the, the fine line between good and evil, uh, you gotta get past that. Because uh, it doesn't work the way you want it to. And the way the little baby uh, kindergarten thing that they gave you about what good is and what evil is, is a whole, as you grow up and get older, you begin to realize it's a lot more complicated than uh, they make it out to be. Like I said, I have no idea how karma works. Um, I mean, yes, you do good and good comes back. You do bad and bad comes back, but it's not that simple. All I know is karma is precise. Precise. You get what you, you, you reap what you sow. That's what's been told to you in every scripture that's out there. Um, as you sow, so you shall reap. You cannot plant apple seeds and pick pears. <laughs> it's as simple as that, right? <laughs> if you, I mean, period. Uh, if you plant grapes, you're going to get grapes, right? If you plant grapes and you want and you want wheat, um, you're going to have a bad time because you can't plant grape seeds and so, and harvest wheat. Um, but the idea being is that these guys uh, that are you know have uh, hold themselves out to be gods or angels or even demons or devils. Um, it's not that simple. It's that I mean because we because we want to we want a god that every everything good is God and everything bad is is evil right is Satan. Um, and and getting back to this, quote unquote these shape shifting lizard people that were in Captain Marvel. Um, and yeah, okay, it's 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 only a movie, but the idea is uh, could there be. Uh, are, are there evil humans? Um, you know there are evil humans. I mean, I've met... Uh, I mean, even just take a look. All right. Metaphors and allegory uh, to try to explain some of this stuff. Um, those of you that shepherd animals, those of you that take care of, of even just cats and dogs, right? Um, or those of you that have had pets, because those are the ones that are you're most used to. But, I mean, farmers deal with all manner of, uh, you know, birds, and, you know, chickens and goats and cattle and so forth. But most people don't have experience with that. Um, but I can tell you from, from being on numerous farms and, and dealing with uh, that part of the uh, uh, human experience is uh, that, uh, you know, there's gay cows, there's gay chickens, there's gay goats. Uh, uh, you know, simple as that. Um, actually, you know, let's not even go there. Let's go back to the cat, cats and dogs. 
uh, you, if you have dealt with uh, cats and you know people that are cat lovers and people that get together with cats, there are mama cats that absolutely take care of their young and are like, you know, very attentive and so forth. And there are mama cats that could give a shit, right? They give, they give birth and pretty much uh, the kittens are more or less on their own. I mean, they'll feed them and so forth because they have that much of a mother instinct, but they're not attentive. You can tell, right? Same thing with dogs. I know dogs that will kill their own puppies. Uh, and there are other dogs that would never, I mean, they take care of their, I mean, you know, I mean, okay. So, and that's animals. That's the, that's a, those are the quote unquote lower density than us. And those of you that take care of lower density animals and make sure that, okay, so say you've got a mama cat that, that, uh, doesn't take care of her kittens. Well, you step in and take care of the kittens instead, right? Or, you know, a mama cat that abandons her, her, uh, her brood. Uh, same thing with dogs. Same thing. I mean, lots of animals like that. Okay, it doesn't happen so often because most animals will take care of their young because they understand the con the prime directive, which is uh, pass on genes. But um, okay, so there are others that look at us kind of like those cats and dogs, where um, we're not taking care of the planet so well, and we're not taking care of each other so well, and we're not doing so well as stewards. Um, so they come back to help, as it were. Um, some of them uh, with more ego than others and, you know, holding themselves out to be uh, gods and uh, tricking us into thinking that uh, they, they created us. Um, they didn't. <laughs> Is there a creator? Yes, because um, if that those gods or those others... Uh, See, and I'm not going to get it because people will get upset because there are many different religions where you have. But, I mean, the idea is that um, who created them then, right? Those of you who believe in Anuaki and, and uh, these others in the Garden of Eden that, you know, made the slave rage so we can mine gold for them or whatever that story is from, uh, oh, what's the guy's name? I can't remember his name at the moment. It's escaping me. If I wasn't making the video, it would come to mind. But um, a lot of the stuff that he wrote is... is uh, was 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 channeled in or given to him by those people. But, so who created them then? The Elohim and so on. Uh, let us make him in our own image. Let us make man in our own in our own image. The, the plural. Um, but the idea being that uh, is there an uh, and see now this comes to personal belief and and uh, it is a personal thing and all of them all of them tell you that it's a personal thing your your uh, relationship with the creator is a personal relationship but you are that there because that's all there is um, but the idea being is that long story short uh, there I in my belief there is uh, but one uh, and one only creator, uh, that created all of this, and we're it, we're all of that, we're the, that, that, um, there's only one of us here, even though, see, and that's the paradox, because it's very clear to me that, uh, the one of us that's here, it comes from a lot of different places, <laughs> um, because, I mean, take a look at the difference between, like, Aborigines and, I mean, Aborigines from Australia, right, they're, they even get their chromosomes are one off. Um, or we are one or the other. I don't know who, who got here first. Um, but I mean, you know, uh, into the Philippines and Indonesia and so forth and the various hominids. Um, and then you get to uh, go up north in the Nordics and so on and, uh, you know, Cromagnum man and, 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 and all these different creatures. And yet we all get along or we ought to be able to get along and interbreed with each other. And, uh, but yet there are some, uh, my girlfriend being one of them, that, uh, Rh negative, uh, you breed with somebody like me, and the, the, the her body will reject the the fetus you know, without serious medication, because uh, these the, they they cannot uh, pass genes naturally unless they have another Rh negative. Um, what the fuck with that? Uh, the idea, you know, I mean, like things are a little more complicated than they want it. Uh, they don't want you to believe it to be. Um, this all didn't get made and put together 6,000 years ago, I'm telling you. Um, and it doesn't end, uh, tomorrow. Uh, the idea is, uh, it's this, this whole thing, uh, humanity is not, uh, shackled to a planet. It's a consciousness. It's a thing. It's not a, it's a, it's a people. It's not a place, I believe, is what, uh, Jesus was trying to tell you. Um... But the idea is 
that we ought to be able to get along. We ought to be able to stop killing each other in huge amounts. We ought to, uh, and I think that's part of the experiment that we're in. This, this uh, as I said, simulation is a very poor word for it. But the idea that we are uh, here together to learn about this concept of love and uh, right? love self, right? So you can love others, right? Forgive self so you can forgive others. It's, it's such basic scripture. And then you can't serve self. You have to serve others. And when, and then paradoxically, when you serve self, uh, excuse me, when you serve others, you wind up serving yourself, right? But if you put others first, oh, right? Go uh, provide a service for somebody else and uh, suddenly you have wealth, right? Simple as that. Uh, and see, they've tried to corrupt all three of these things to the point where you can't love self, to the point where you uh, start hating self and you have these others that set examples like, oh, you know, we should, there shouldn't be so many humans on the planet. Nonsense. The more, the more of us there are, the higher the consciousness raises and the easier it is for everybody here. Because unless you're a complete waste of space, um, you're going to contribute something, right? Um, you're here to do something, uh, whether it's, and if you're a farmer, you're going to make more food than you can eat, right? Uh, plant a garden in your backyard, damn it, and you'll see that uh, even just one guy, you can't, you won't, on a very small plot of land, you'll grow more stuff than you can eat. If everybody does that, now everybody's got more food than they can eat, now you can share it. And so some people want to, uh, I don't know. I know guys that like to grow cucumbers. I know guys that like tomatoes. I know guys that like to grow uh, onions. I know guys that like to grow cabbages. I live here on Maui. This is what was a bread basket, you know, for a long time. Uh, it was easier to because of the ocean. See, and there should be a clue right there. It was much easier to feed the gold miners in uh, California uh, out of Kula and uh, Maui than it was to get uh, stuff across the Rocky Mountains from the breadbasket around the Mississippi and so forth, because trying to get food over the Mississippi was difficult, but putting it in a ship and sailing to uh, San Francisco or Los Angeles or San Diego or Seattle or, or, or uh, along the coast, all those coastal uh, ports, uh, was much, much easier than uh, wagon trains and railroads and so forth. And I mean, it took a long time for us to get the railroads across the mountains and to get it into California. So, uh, growing food in Hawaii... Um, and then shipping it to the mainland was literally was much much easier uh, and faster than trying to get it across the mountains this has been the case forever on this planet the oceans were highways the rivers were highways they were not barriers uh, ships were um, that technology has been with us for a long time there's a great thing in this uh, uh, video you'll see below where, um, gee, in uh, isolated areas of the rainforests in uh, South America, in the Amazon, there are DNA, see, and our, our uh, technology is finally starting to uh, blow apart our, our science of anthropology, um, pockets of places where they share DNA with uh, Indonesia and Australia, uh, the Australians. Uh, that are there now, Aboriginal DNA and so forth, and the Indian tribes and so forth, all around, right? And you only find it in South America. You don't find it in North America, so that idea that they had to come down across a land bridge and so forth, completely blown out of the water. And it's like, how could this possibly happen? Um, the answer is boats. <laughs> it's, not, it's a very simple answer. Uh, ships, boats, yes. Um, I mean, you take a look at some of the, the tremendously huge uh, craft that they had uh, going back in the, uh, you know, even just in Roman times. Um, and you're going to tell me that those boats couldn't get across the Atlantic. But anyway, the idea being is that, uh, no, um, the Polynesians, uh, some of the greatest seafarers, and also the Celts, another great seafaring nation, and even Vikings. I mean, we've been sailing around on this island, or on this planet, and it is an island in space, but uh, on this planet... Um, for centuries immemorial, I mean, for forever, uh, for time going back forever and ever, uh, we've been on the oceans and uh, left traces of DNA. And, I, oh, I could leave a couple of other ones uh, if you want to watch those. They're kind of fun, uh, talking about the long skulls pursuing each other and pursuing the more peaceful ones, because even among those guys, um, and I mean, like I said, there's all kind of races, all kind of things going on here. Uh, and the history that we've been told, it becomes very clear that it's been complete bullshit, just complete mind-washing. Um, and what the truth is, very hard to piece together. 
but um, the idea that uh, there are good and bad in all cultures, in all people, in all races, in all everything, uh, should be easily understandable. And those that shepherd uh, the weak, uh, you know, even just taking care of sheep, like I said, just taking care of animals, um, you're doing good work. Uh, and there are others that are up a density from us and, and perhaps uh, are uh, interdimensional. I mean, you're an interdimensional creature. Uh, where do you go when you dream? What, what happened? I mean, some of those dreams, do, that, do they not feel very, very real? Is it... Uh, and, and see, and then I, I love reading the Supreme Yoga and other books. This one here. Uh, where they talk about the people in your dreams have dreams. <laughs> where does it end? Uh, this one tries to tell you that it's a literal story. And I've talked about that before, the multiple ciphers that you can do. Because there, there's a law cipher in there. And uh, once you get the law cipher, ooh, ooh, um, and I'll put a, well, maybe I won't put a couple of videos on that because here's the thing with law. Um, you can get in trouble, right? You start uh, throwing liens around and you don't know about liens. You start throwing certain documents around and you are and you don't know what the words mean, but you just, you know, you read something on the internet or, or watched the YouTube video. Um, one of the things that they very much enjoy doing is enslaving you. Right? I mean, abject slavery, right? putting you in a cage and uh, getting you to make stuff for the war machine and uh, paying you uh, small amounts. And then while you're in that prison, you're going to be unhappy, right? looking through the prison bars uh, to the outside world. Ooh, then they can look. Oh, anyway, they can eat that. Um, but the one thing they cannot eat is love. Right? The one thing they don't want is uh, your happy feelings. Uh, and one thing that seems to... Um, give them pause, and I've only just started doing research, and I almost left the house today to go get some, if I could see if I could find some on Maui, and of course I'm going to be able to. I, I, I was uh, exposed to a bunch of this in uh, California when I, while I was there, um, and these guys making organite, these little pyramids and uh, pipes with, you know, wrapped copper and crystals in them, and that got, right, and, uh, you know, it's all woo-woo, uh, but at the same time, there seems to be a uh, organized effort to a suppress the knowledge, and uh, b if people get uh, too into it, they will uh, appear um, and do what they can to, to stop it. But uh, there seems to be just a little too much in a too. There's there's something to it. Let's put it that way. So, Organite, I'll uh, put a couple of links below, and I think I'm going to make a uh, playlist. If you look, I have playlists on birth certificates, and I have playlists on, uh, you know, I'm just trying to aggregate information here, 100 monkeys, the concept, right? Um, but, you know, uh, on three cent postage, and, you know, learn about the UPU, and so on. Um, but, I mean, I have multiple playlists. Go take a look at some of those playlists and watch some of those videos um, on the ones that interest you. And I think I'm going to make a Organite playlist. Um, and it seems uh, there is, uh, of course, because there's varying and different humans on the planet, there's varying and different ideas about whatever the hell it is. I, I believe somebody, uh, you know, get on Facebook or uh, Twitter or, or, or any of the social media. And, uh, you know, people argue about any fucking thing. So um, there is no consensus that I can find about the quote-unquote best kind of organite or the best uh, shapes and so forth to, to form it in. But it seems the pyramid is the shape you want to go with. Um, but even then, there are other uh, shapes that seem to work. Some of these uh, tower busters and so on. And then a couple of people are saying that um, it's, it's not just the deep state uh, fighting with each other and the alliance winning. It's also because uh, organite has caught on in California and uh, people are putting it all over the place, and that's why uh, the water has returned, and that's why the... Uh... Okay, I'm just... Do I believe that? I don't know one way or the other. It's, it's uh, probably... It, it, some things are more probable than plausible. Uh, but the, the, is it possible? Mm, it's possible. But the idea is, find out about Organite. The, the point of that uh, tirade is uh, Organite seems to be something that that kind of energy, you probably want to put it in your house. Uh, you probably want to have it in your, because uh, I can tell you a story 
um, very briefly, um, I used to, I had an ad for a long time in Craigslist. Have weed eater, will travel. You'd be amazed at how many guys can't work a weed eater. Um, and again, the wealthy will never cut their own lawns. Um, so if I wanted some pocket money, um, and actually even more than pocket money, I could pay rent on that if I wanted to. Um, just, you know, yard work. And I know, uh, I have a couple of friends now, who, what I call one guy Organic Dave and his brother Kevin. Um, they have done exceedingly well on this island. Um, doing landscaping, as, they, as we call it here. Right? Because, again, uh, there are many, many wealthy people on the island of Maui, and they don't cut their own damn grass. Right? <laughs> They're not cutting their own grass. So, uh, you know, they've managed to buy houses and nice cars and all kind of stuff. Just working weed eater. Um, but the idea is that there was a property that I worked on. Uh, two gay guys. Uh, very flaming. <laughs> One of them very, very flaming. Like, very proud of the fact that he was gay. And I mean, like, the full lisp and, I mean, just the whole nine yards, you know. Uh, like, you know, the flamer. And, uh, you know, cool guys. Totally cool guys. And they paid well and they paid on time. No argument. Um, and, you know, they were very... Uh, see, a lot of times the problem with contracts and so forth is uh, people are not concise or uh, clear on what they want done. But these guys were very clear. Just, I want that mode. I want this to look like that. I want you to do this, right? And, and uh, I have a reputation for if I say I'm going to be there, I'll be there, right? Uh, I've actually had that happen a couple of times where um, they said show up at 9 and I was at 9 and they're like, what are you doing here? I'm like, uh, you said be here at 9. And, you know, they hadn't even made coffee or barely got out of bed and they didn't because uh, they're in Hawaii. We have this thing called Hawaii time, <laughs> Hawaiian time. And so they figured if they told me to be here at 9, I might show up at, you know, 10 or 11. Um, but no, I was, so anyway, the point being is that I, they enjoyed the fact that, um, you know, if they told me to be there at such and such time, I showed up at that, at the appointed time and I did the work that they gave me to do. And, uh, this is years ago, many, many moons ago. Um, but their property, they had put Organite on the four corners of the property and they had this mama crystal, they called it in the middle of the property. And I'll tell you what, that property, <clears throat> It was unnatural. I mean, it was natural, apparently, uh, but I mean, it was, everything was green and very little, uh, everything was growing and healthy and there was very little dead wood or very little decay, very, I mean, it was just vibrant, let's put it that way. And uh, because it was so vibrant and so forth and they lived in the jungle and near the rainforest and so forth, it was also on the coast. Um, you know, it needed trimming because otherwise the thing would overgrow the drive. I mean, seriously, that stuff grew like crazy. And uh, they, after having worked there for a while, they told me the secret that, or what they believed was the secret to it. Um, but because I've worked on other properties near that, and no, you get, you know, dead wood and you get, uh, you know, some plants die off and, it's, you know, it, you get brown leaves and so on. This place, it was like, a movie set. I mean, like Eden. It was <laughs> and organite and crystals uh, is what they uh, attributed to this uh, vibrancy. So uh, even back then there was something to it. But I just kind of you know, being a human, you kind of just shuffle it off. Uh, but now I've been getting back into uh, taking a look at organite, and they had pyramids on their property and so forth. Oh. Uh, take a look at what David Wilcock and a couple of other people have talked about when it comes to pyramids. And then you start to realize, the Great Pyramids, there's a huge pile of organite. <laughs> Get right down to it. Um, because like I said, I have no idea what the pyramids were, but I mean, uh, hmm... Uh, and everybody says, uh, when they get to those few people that um, I've heard interviews from, that when you get to the top of those pyramids, that there's a definite, if they let you, and you know, if you bribe the right people to get to the top, um, that there's a definite energy there, that you can feel it coming up through that pyramid. Hmm, very, very interesting. Um, and the fact that uh, many people have figured out in uh, Russia and Ukraine um, that you make these pyramidal structures and uh, you get better crops and you get, uh, you know, the animals don't get as sick. I mean, just really, just from having a pyramid on your property? Um, seems to me there needs to be more, because see, we don't study uh, energy enough. We want to study the molecule. We want to study atoms. We want to study if it's physical, we're in there. But um, Tesla told you 
um, that frequency and vibration is where it's at, right? It's not this. It's not this stuff. It's frequency and vibration. Um, and so pyramids seem to have uh, an effect on frequency and vibration. Uh, what that effect is uh, needs more research. I certainly can't tell you, uh, but I can tell you, again, there's something to it. Um, okay, Cram Stoppers, I've been babbling along long enough. Uh, prepare. Just prepare. Um, and do your research. I'll try and put a video down there. But um, this, it's way far off in the future, right? I mean, 2037, but when you get down to it, it's not that far in the future. I never in a fucking million years thought I was going to get this old this fast. Uh, and now, I was just at my bank. And see, i gotta, I got to make a video about that. I really do. But um, I was sitting there talking to, my, uh, to the branch manager. This is an older Japanese woman. And uh, they got a bunch of new tellers in. And uh, that one teller... Uh, was looking at my account and he goes, my God, you've uh, been banking here. What is it? Uh, I, I opened an account at that bank 10 years before the guy was born. <laughs> I'm fucking old. All right. Uh, this is going to creep up on you pretty quickly. I mean, that's only, what, it's 2019. That's only 21 years away, guys. Uh, or excuse me, what is it? It's uh, 2020, it'll be 17. Yeah, it's 19 years away. Um... It comes faster than you might think. And this one, like I said, uh, 2046, I will be, uh, I'm not going to say, well, actually I will, I'll, say, I'll be 72 when that one happens. Well, I'll almost be 72 when that one happens. Um, which is only, you know, not that long from now, right? Because 20 years from now, I'll be 75, so knock off three years. Uh, so it's 17 years away. Is that what it is? Um, just doing the math. Uh, what, what's the date? This is 19. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, it's, uh, that one's 18 years away and the other one is, is, uh, 2046. Man, that's like, it's, like I said, it seems like it's a long, long way from here, but, uh, it's not. I mean, ugh, oops. What is this, 19? So, uh, yeah. Not that long from now. Um, and it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's not something that's going to end the world. It's not something you should be afraid of. Uh, it's something you should prepare for. Um, and do some research on and on how to prepare, because I don't believe gold and silver is going <laughs> to help you out here. Because uh, what good's your gold and silver if uh, you know a rock out of the sky falls on your head? Uh, <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, point being is um, you, we've been warned on numerous occasions from numerous angles and. Uh, we should probably take advantage of uh, this warning and prepare. So, e pluribus unum crime stoppers, uh, educate self, educate others.